factoring a trinomial when the leading coefficient is not 1 and there is no GCF, which means greatest common factor. I use what's called the slide and divide method, and the mnemonic device that I use is Swedish fish don't really swim. What that means is you take the first letter from your saying, and each of them stands for something. So the S in Swedish stands for slide, the number in front, and multiply it by the last number. The F in FISH stands for factor, the new equation. Um, D stands for divide, the numbers in um, the factors by the number you slid at the start of the equation. R stands for reduce the fractions, and S stands for swing the fractions um, denominator number in front of the variable. So we are going to see what each of these things mean by doing some examples. So the first example that we have is 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. So for the first thing that we want to do is S, slide the number in front and multiply it by the last. So I take this number here and I multiply it by the 9. So I'm going to multiply that. When I multiply that, I'm going to rewrite my new equation. So x squared minus 12x and 4 times 9 gives me 36, so plus 36. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to set up my two set of binomials when I'm factoring a trinomial. So I have um, my two set of parentheses. Now because my first term is an x squared, I know to get that it's x times x, so my first term in each of my bin binomials is going to be x. Now I have to figure out my signs. We've already talked about how to figure out what your signs are. So in this case, I need to figure out are my signs going to be both positive, are they going to both be negative, or are they going to be opposite? So since my um, last term has a positive sign and my middle term is negative, that means that both my signs here and here need to be negative because a negative number times a negative number gives you a positive last number, but the middle number is going to add up to a negative number when you add those two terms that are going to be like together. So now I need to figure out what are factors of 36 that add up to negative 12. And if you're not good with your factors, a little trick that you can do in your calculator, if you go to your y equals, and in your y equals, if um, you didn't know what factors of 36 were, you could do 36 divided by x, and then if you go to second graph, and I should put this on auto. So now if I go to my second graph, notice I get my table values. So if I start at 1, I know that 1 and 36 are going to be factors, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 5 and 7.2 are not factors because it doesn't go in evenly, 6 and 6, and since I get the same number back, I know I can stop there because that's the last one that's going to be a factor. So if I look at these, I want to figure out which ones, if I um, put a negative in front of them, are going to add up to negative 12. It would be negative 6 and negative 6. So on my um, paper, I'm going to put right in here 6 and 6, and both of them are negative because negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36, and negative 6 plus negative 6 gives me negative 12 for my middle term. So now I just did factor. D stands for divide. So that number that we originally had in the beginning that um, we took and we multiplied it by this number right here, that means I'm going to take that number 4 and divide it by both of the numbers that are in my um, two sets of binomials. Now that I have this, R stands for reduce. So I want to reduce these fractions by simplifying them. So this would become x minus 6 divided by 4 reduces into 3 over 2. And this would be, again, x minus 3 over 2. Well, now, we don't like to leave our answer like this. We don't like fractions there. So the last thing I need to do is if I have a number that's in my denominator, like right here, that number is going to swing and go in front of your x. So then that becomes 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. Since there are two of them, we can actually write this as a binomial squared, which would be 2x minus 3 quantity squared. And this right here would be my factored form for this equation. Now, if we're unsure, we can always do what I like to do, which is check my answer. So if I check my answer, I either you can box or foil this out. I like to use the box method, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this would be 2x and then minus 3 
and 2x minus 3. So 2x times 2x gives me 4x squared. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. And then negative 3 times 2x gives me negative 6x. And negative 3 times negative 3 would be positive um, 9. Now I need to combine my like terms. Where are my like terms? Right here. So then my first term is going to be 4x squared, negative 6x minus 6x is minus 12x, and then my last one is plus 9. Notice that this is the same as the equation that we originally started with, therefore I did my factoring correctly. So I'm going to take that and move it, extend my page and move it under here. Okay. So that would be to check my answer. So let's go ahead and go to the next equation and solve this. So for this one, we're going to do the same thing. So the first thing I need to do is remember, and if it helps you, write out your Swedish fish don't really swim, if that helps you to write it out. So the first thing we do is take that number in front and slide it to the number in back and multiply the two together. So, and then rewrite it. So this is going to be n squared minus 11n minus 12. Now the next thing we need to do is factor the new equation. So set up your two set of parentheses. And for this, I know that the first one is going to be n, and this is going to be n because n times n would give you n squared. Now I need to think about my signs. Are they going to both be positive, both be negative, or are they going to be opposite? So if you look at your last term, when you multiply two numbers together and you want it to be negative answer, that means that your um, numbers are, in this case, going to both have to be opposite. So one's going to be plus and one's going to be minus. And it doesn't matter where you put these signs, um, but the thing that does matter is when you look for factors of 12 that are going to add up to your middle term, which is negative 11, then since it's negative 11 in the middle, you want your larger number to be the negative number. So um, let's say that you didn't know factors of 12. You could go back to your calculator and go to your y equals, and then this time do 12 divided by x, and then go to your table to look for factors. And so in this case, you have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and then once you get back to the one that you just did was 3 and 4, and then you get 4 and 3, you know, you can stop. So one that's going to add up to negative 11 would be if you had the larger numbers negative and the smaller number is going to be positive. So negative 12 plus 1 would give me negative 11. So if I go back here, I know that this is going to be um, positive 1 and negative 12. Now that I have that, the next step would be to divide the number that I slid in the original problem, which was 6. So I'm going to divide each number by 6. When I do that, R stands for reduce. So we want to reduce the fractions. So n plus 1 over 6 doesn't reduce, so it's going to stay the same. And this would become n minus 2. Now we're not finished because if I have numbers left in my denominator, I take those numbers and I swing them in front. And this one is really over 1, so really it's like we're swinging the 1 in front there. We just don't write the 1. So this then becomes, when we do that, 6n plus 1 and n minus 2. Now this right here would be my factored equation, so my factored trinomial. Now I'm not done because as always I like to check my work, so I'm going to go ahead and do that by foiling or I like to do the box method, so I'm going to check by doing the box method here. So I have 6n and then plus 1 over here and then n minus 2, so n times 6n gives me 6n squared, n times 1 gives me n, negative 2 times 6n gives me negative 12n, and then negative 2 times 1 gives me negative 2. Then I'm going to circle my like terms, which are here. So I'm just going to go ahead and write this out. So we got 6n squared, then you're doing plus n because it's positive n, minus 12n, minus 2. We said these were our like terms, so this becomes 6n squared, minus 11n, minus 2. Then we're going to check to see if this matches the original problem that we did. And if we look back up here, this checks out with this problem, so that means we did our factoring correctly, and this would be my solution. 
So um, again, you just have to remember the steps. And if it helps you to write them down as you go, that might be a good idea to do. So if we just go back to reiterate, S stands for slide, F stands for factor, D stands for divide, R reduce, S swing. And of course, if you have a hard time finding the factors of a number, let's say it was something really high, like you had to find factors of your last term, which were maybe like, let's say 148 and you just divide that number whatever it is by x then you can see all the factors of 148 1 and 148 2 and 74 4 and 37 and then you'd keep going until you got back the other way and so and then that would be your factors and then you'd have to figure out which ones give you your middle term so that's the slide and divide method.